Well, that's the way I got to seeing these things after I'd boned away at them a while. If I'd been up on this business right from the start, I'd never have pulled the boner I did once during the mag check. I was doing all right up until then, too. Manifold pressure to 28 inches and both. Left. Yeah, something wrong, all right. Turbo's on during the mag check. That's a bad deal. And I was old enough to know better. But I went on with the mag check, hoping I hadn't wrecked anything. And of course, it was all right when I ran it up to full throttle. But I was way short on turbo boost. The flight was off that day. It was back to the hangar for us. A good burning out for my instructor. Here's what he pounded into my head. Turbo's on during the mag check means waste gates closed during the mag check. And brother, if there's any possibility of an exhaust backfire, the closed waste gate situation is just about as sensible as this one. I was just about that smart. For closing up the stack with the waste gate during the mag check is every bit as dumb. If you get a backfire, your exhaust stack will make like a cannon. And you're all set for a beautiful backfire during the mag check if only one of your 18 spark plugs in one engine is fouled, as the right one is here. The left plug is carrying the whole burden of ignition in this cylinder. Fouling of plugs, of course, is most likely to occur in the lower cylinder. Now, with the right plug fouled, you're obviously getting combustion in that cylinder on both. And when you switch to left, the situation's unchanged. Remember now, the other eight cylinders are okay. They're sending hot exhaust charges out into the exhaust stack, heating the stack, making it one long spark plug. So what happens when you switch to right, which means sending an unburned charge out into that stack? The unburned charge is ignited by the heat of the stack and the hot exhaust from the other cylinder. If the waste gate had been open, the backfire could have passed harmlessly out at the end of the stack. Even if all your plugs are clean, you still have a backfire hazard during the mag check. The danger then lies in accidentally switching to off. If that happens, all nine cylinders will fail to ignite. Nine unburned charges will pass into that hot exhaust stack. I used to have nightmares like that, after I got so I really understood this stuff. Now, let's go back to that runaway turbo on takeoff. It can happen before you leave the runway, but we'd just got the gear up when number four went crazy. My job was to keep her flying level. Co-pilot cut down that excessive manifold pressure with the throttle, not the turbo. Down to 40 inches and fast, or you'll lose the engine. And here's why you use the throttle. What you're having is wastegate trouble. She slammed shut. Failure to exercise properly or mechanical failure or frozen condensation in the exhaust balance line. Whatever the cause, you get an excessive exhaust back pressure and an extreme pressure differential across the turbine buckets. And your turbo impeller is really running away. And that means excessive pressure is being delivered to the carburetor and manifold. This excessive pressure results in an excessively lean mixture which can damage the engine if allowed to continue long. So work fast. Dam off that pressure with a throttle. Throttle because your turbo control's probably gone anyway. That's all you can do. Save the engine. Keep her flying level and take her back in. I felt all right about the deal that day. Did my part of the job okay. We turned her over to the boys on the line for diagnosis and treatment. Cause of the trouble was failure of mechanical linkage. Ready to fly again in a couple of hours. You know, in, in some ways, maybe I have a kind of horse and buggy complex. I, I know all the advantages of the electronic control system, but I still sort of like working out the problems that go along with the hydraulic regulators. Take this pressure differential business, for instance. 
Anybody can learn to fiddle with the turbo controls during a climb to keep your manifold pressure from creeping up on you. But it's a good thing to know why it must be done. In the cockpit, it's power you're interested in, and power depends on manifold pressure. So after your takeoff, you reduce to 2300 RPM and 38 inches manifold pressure. And the electronic system would hold her at about that pressure at all altitudes. But with the hydraulic controls, when you reduce to rated power for the climb, it means only that you've ordered your regulator to set the wastegate to maintain a constant gas back pressure in the exhaust stack. Let's say you have around a thousand feet of altitude by the time you reduce power to 38 inches. Actually, you set your wastegate to back up a pressure of about 31 inches here in the stack. At this altitude, free air pressure stands at around 29 inches. The difference between these two pressures, pressure differential, gives the turbo RPM needed to deliver, with the help of the engine blower, 38 inches manifold pressure. But you're climbing, and free air pressure is decreasing at the rate of about one barometric inch for every thousand feet of altitude. So what's the situation at 5,000 feet if you haven't changed your turbo settings since you reduced power? The regulators kept readjusting the wastegate position to maintain the same exhaust back pressure you had at around 1,031 inches. But atmospheric pressures dropped to around 25 inches. Pressure differential of 31 to 25 instead of 31 to 29. And impeller moving two or three times as fast as it was at 1,000 feet. It had to speed up some in this thinner air, but not that much. The result shows in the cockpit on your manifold pressure gauge. Pressure here in the manifold, far above the value you want for climbing power. And that's the way you lose engines. <laughs> but the remedy's simple. You order the regulator to open the wastegate a little. Exhaust back pressure decreases. 